Greetings everyone, Melderon here. Welcome to another Classic WoW.Live guide on Def Cat Melderon TV. Well, I've done the Dungeon Key guide, now it's time to move on to the Raid Attunement guide. This guide will help you get attuned, or gain access to, the raids in Classic WoW. A large bulk of this guide will be dedicated to the Anixia's Lair Attunement, considering that's the longest and hardest attunement in Classic WoW if we don't consider the Scepter of the Shifting Sands. If you are a Horde, make sure to use the timestamps below to get to the Horde-specific part of Anixia's Lair, and if you're Alliance, do the same thing. As with all my guides, timestamps will be available in a pinned comment below, and a link to the slides will be available if you'd rather just go through them on your own pace. Alright guys, let's get started. So let's do a brief introduction before we get started. What are attunements? They are gatekeeping mechanisms for raids. And the requirements to complete these attunements could be keys, items, quests, or a combination of all three. And these attunements are required for you to progress into the raids in Classic WoW, and therefore get the awesome loot that are in these raids. So technically, keys can be one type of attunement, and these are primarily used for dungeons. I've already made a guide for that. A link to that guide will be in the description below, or you can click on the link if you're looking at the slides. It's really important to watch this guide first, because you're going to need the Shadow Forge key and the Seal of Ascension, or the Uber's key, to complete parts of the Anixia attunement and even other attunements. So I would definitely hit that first if you haven't watched it yet. And the raids we're going to cover in this guide are Molten Core, Anixia's Lair, Blackwing Lair, and next Ramas. Technically, the Gates of Ankara's server-wide event is an attunement, but it's a server-wide attunement. It's very unique in that the whole server has to contribute a certain amount of resources and time to get the raid tier 2.5 to open up. And this is going to fall in the hands of everyone, really, not just the Scarab Lords. And the Scarab Lord, even though they may spend the time and energy to get the Scepter of the Shifting Sands, which is very hard to get, they can't open the gates until both factions provide the resources to open the gate. So this is a very interesting thing. I will not cover it in this guide. However, Mad Season Showed does an excellent job of covering the Encourage Attunement, the server-wide event, so I would check out his videos. The link to Part 1 will be in the description below as well. Let's get started with the first raid, which will be available in Classic WoW's launch, which is Molten Core. Now this doesn't have an actual attunement in that anyone can actually enter the raid if you're level 50 or higher if you're in a raid group. It's just that this attunement process allows you to get to the raid much quicker using teleportation. So if you're level 55, you can pick up the quest Attunement to the Core. The quest giver is Lothos Riftwaker, and he is located in Black Rock Mountain. If you cross the chains from the main circular structure on the outside of Black Rock Mountain, you can gain access to that suspended rock formation, and you can go down to the bottom of that and take the chain down to where you would enter Black Rock Depths, and you'll see this high elf there with a quest over his head if you're level 55 or higher. You can also gain access to him by jumping down to the lava, making sure you don't die, and swimming or jumping up to where his platform is. So step one is to receive the quest attunement to the core from Lothos, and he'll task you with retrieving the core fragment from Black Rock Depths, and it's at 58.631. Now this is going to require you to have the Shadow Forge key to go through the Grim Guzzler and to head to the area where you will see three fire elementals guarding this area, guarding the entrance to Molten Core. Or you can do a lava run. You can bypass having the Shadow Forge key, jump out the window above Lord Incendius, head down to the lava, and you can travel to this location without having the key. Now once you get there and you dispose of the fire elementals, you'll notice a interesting looking rock formation to the left of the raid portal and you can take a sample from this and bring it back to Lothos. And once you get to him and you turn in the quest, he will allow you to speak to him in the future and you can teleport right inside of Molten Core. Now interestingly, in early vanilla, the teleport feature was not there. So you'd have to talk to him, turn it in, and then jump out the window to his left. And this worked as a teleportation. And the funny thing is back then, if you were laggy or if the server was having a glitch or an issue, you'd jump in the lava and die. But this is how you originally got into Molten Core after completing this quest. Nowadays in Classic WoW, you just talk to him, teleport right inside. Now we move on to Anixia's Lair. This is the longest attunement in Classic WoW for both factions. It's much harder for Horde, and I don't think that's objective. After you see this guide and see both factions, I think you'll probably agree with me. Step one is to receive the quest Warlord's Command from Warlord Gortooth, who's in Kargath on top of the Watchtower at 5.847.5, and the required level to get this quest is 55. And he will task you with killing bosses in Lower Black Rock Spire, three to be exact, Highlord Almach at 2535, Warmaster Voon at 6762, and Overlord Wormthalock at 4662. These are the same three bosses that are required for the Seal of Ascension quest, 
so you could partially get some of that quest done at the same time if you still need some pieces for that quest line. If you want to know how to get the Seal of Ascension for Upper Black Rock Spire, check out the Dungeon King guide I made. Now, in addition to killing these three bosses, you also have to find the important Black Rock documents. These have four possible spawn points inside Lower Black Rock Spire. They get spawned near any of the three bosses, or they get spawned near Uruk's Tribute Pile, which is a event, a boss event in Lower Black Rock Spire, where a bunch of ogres will come out, and that location is 3624. You don't have to do this actual event for this documents to be there. It'll be sitting near the pile of bones. So after you kill bosses, make sure you scour the area around where their bodies are. If you see a piece of paper on the ground, make sure you pick it up because you're going to need that to complete this part of the quest chain. After you've killed all three and you have the important Black Rock documents, head back to Warlord Gortooth in Kargath. Now Gortooth will ask you to seek out Etrig in Orgrimmar at 3439. He's an orc in Gromash Hold right near where Thrall is. So you're going to speak with Etrig. You're not going to actually turn in the quest. You're just going to open a piece of dialogue with him. And then a turn in will spawn on Thrall at 3238 right next to Etrig. And you're going to accept the quest for the Horde. And he will task you, Thrall, with slaying Ren Blackhand, one of the bosses in Upper Black Rock Spire. He's located at 5456 inside of the Stadium Gauntlet. Now remember, you're going to have to have the Seal of Ascension to get into Uber, so make sure either you or someone in your party has it. And when you get to this event, you'll drop down and seven waves of Dragonkin and Orcs will come out. And after the seventh wave, Gith who is Ren Blackhand's mount, will come out with Ren Blackhand riding him. You're going to bring Gith down to 20% health or so. It will cause Ren to dismount. Make sure you finish off Gith and then move on to Ren. Now, Ubers is technically a raid. It doesn't have a raid lockout. And Ubers will probably be a 10-man in Classic WoW. So make sure you have a raid of 10 people and you kill Ren and retrieve his head. And with head in hand, you're going to head back to Thrall and Orgrimmar. Now, Thrall will tell you a story called What the Wind Carries. It's very interesting. I definitely would recommend reading it. It tells you about the history with the Horde and the Alliance and the tenuous pact that they have. But he gives you a quest to seek out the champion of the Horde, Rexar. Now, Rexar is not an easy guy to find. He patrols through Desolus from Stone Talon Peak in Stone Talon Mountains all the way down to the Twin Colossals into actual Feralis. And depending on which way he's traveling, he'll take a different route. So make sure you scour the area. It's really good to go into general chat and just say, hey, has anyone seen Rexar? And someone will say, yeah, I just saw him he's running down this way just make sure you talk to him and you're going to talk to Rexar and he's going to give you the quest the testament of the horde the map in the top right of this slide will show you the route he takes through Desolus so make sure you use that map if you're trying to find him and Rexar will task you with delivering Rexar's testament he'll give you an item to Miranda the hag and she is a gnome in Sorrow Hill near Uther's tomb in western playlands at 5178 after she receives a testament, she'll give you the quest Oculus Illusions, which makes you head into Upper Black Rock Spire. So get into a raid group and head into Ubers. Also, don't forget, you're going to need the Seal of Ascension to get into Ubers, so make sure either you have it or someone in your party has it. Now, the good thing is you probably won't have to complete the entire raid in order to get this done. You only have to loot 20 Black Dragon Spawn Eyes from any of the Dragonkin mobs inside of Ubers, and these have a very high drop rate. So once you get your 20 Black Dragon Spawn Eyes, you're going to head back to Miranda in Western Plaguelands. And she will give you an item called the Amulet of Draconic Subversion. Now Miranda will task you to take the Amulet of Draconic Subversion to Ember Strife's cave. And if you've done the Seal of Ascension, you'll know this cave very well. It's an extreme southern Duskwalla Marsh at 5788. Now it's very important for you to equip this amulet before you head into the cave. And once you head into the cave proper, you're going to click on it and it'll turn you into a black dragonkin. So you're going to enter the cave, you're going to go up to where Ember Strife is, and you're going to talk to him. And he's going to give you three quests. The Test of Skulls Cornalis, the Test of Skull Scryer, and the Test of Scrolls Somnus, which will task you with killing these three drakes. And you better get a group of five and get ready, because these guys can be pretty tough. Since you're in Kalimdor and you're pretty close to Tenaris, the first one I would suggest heading to is Cronalis, who's outside the Caverns of Time in eastern Tenaris at 6449. And this drake is to the left of the entrance to the Caverns of Time, the sealed entrance to the Caverns of Time, and he has two abilities, Arcane Bolt and Sand Breath. Arcane Bolt is just a magical damage that he inflicts on an enemy, but Sand Breath can be very annoying, especially if you're melee, and he inflicts an arcane damage to enemies in a cone in front of the caster, reducing their movement speed and increasing the time between attacks for 10 seconds so if you are melee and if you're not the tank make sure to stay behind or to the side of him so you don't get hit by this frontal cone after you down Cronalis, make sure to grab his skull don't leave without it 
Now the next one is also in Kalimdor, but it's to the north in Winter Spring, southwest of Everlook, in a cave, and his name is Scryer, and his location is 5356. Now he lives in the back of a very large cave, full with elite blue dragon kin. So you're going to have some time clearing this area out. It's going to take a little bit, but once you get to him, make sure you clear all around him so you don't pull any more drakes or dragons, and you're going to pull Scryer. He has two abilities, Amplify Damage, which increases all forms of damage taken by the enemy by 100% for 10 seconds, and he has Frost Breath, which will also steal your mana in addition to slowing you down. Once you kill him, make sure to loot his skull. Next, we're going to head over to the Eastern Kingdoms and Swamp of Sorrows. And to the east of the Sunken Temple entrance, you'll notice many elite green dragonkin. And patrolling through that area will be the third drake we're going to kill, Somnus. Now, he patrols through this area. I would definitely recommend pulling him to the extreme north or the extreme south of his patrol route so that if he knocks you back, you'll knock you back into non-elite mobs instead of elite mobs. You could, of course, just clear everything around him and pull him. But he has an ability called Wing Flap, which will knock you into the air pretty far and you don't want to risk having being knocked into an elite dragon so just make sure you pull properly you plan your pull and how you're going to do it he also can put you to sleep and he has corrosive acid breath which is a damage over time effect which is stackable so it could really hurt your tank so make sure you have something to mitigate poison damage or to remove poison kill him and make sure to loot his skull now with those three drake skulls in hand you're going to head back to ember stripes cave remember to re-equip your amulet turn it on so you don't get attacked and you'll turn into a black dragon kin you're going to head back to ember stripe you're going to give him the three skulls and it'll give you another quest to kill another drake named Axtros. so get your group of five make sure you're together and head over to grim batol in the eastern wetlands Axtros himself will pat along the path up to the entrance, the sealed entrance to Grim Patol in the eastern wetlands. And you'll know you're in the right place because there'll be a lot of elite red dragon kin roaming the area. And so you have to clear a lot of these guys out and catch Axtros when he's away from other dragon kins and pull him. He's at 82, 48, but he pats around the area. That's his spawn point. He has three abilities. Fireball, which is just a fire damage. Flame Breath, which is a frontal cone fire damage. So make sure, you, if you're not the tank, to stay out of his face area. And he has Vicious Rend, which will do... A physical dot over time on the person he hits and once you kill him you're gonna loot his skull just like the other ones and you're gonna head back to ember strife so re your amulet turn it on head back to ember strife turn in the last skull and he'll give you the quest called ascension and ascension will have you seek out rexar first so you're gonna find rexar for the second time in desolus and pick up the quest blood of the black dragon champion now this quest will task you to go into Upper Black Rock Spire yet again and kill the final boss this time, General Dracoseth at 3280. He is the final boss of Ubers, and once you kill him, you'll be able to loot the blood of the Dragon Champion. Just make sure you have a raid group for this, as usual. And Dracoseth has four abilities. He has a cleave, which cleaves enemies in, in front of him. He does a Fire Nova AoE effect. He has Conflagration, which is very annoying if you're the tank. He'll put this on you and you'll walk around dazed. And he has Thunderclap, which does another AoE damage. So this could be a pretty tricky fight. Just make sure you clear the area around him before you pull him. And once you loot the Blood of the Dragon Champion, you can take this back to Rexar for the third time. So you have to find Rexar again, and he will finally give you the Drakefire Amulet. Congratulations, you are now attuned to Anixia's Lair. Just make sure you have this amulet on you if you want to get into Anixia's Lair, which is of course located in Duskwall Marsh. Now we'll move on to the Alliance version of the Anixia's Lair Attunement. Step one is you're going to pick up a quest called Dragonkin Menace from Helenja's Riverhorn in Morgan's Vigil, Burning Steps at 8669. The required level to start this chain is 48. And you're going to kill just a bunch of black dragonkin that are right to the north of Morgan's Vigil. 15 black broodlings, 10 black dragon spawns, 1 black drake, and 4 black wormkin. Now three out of four of these are elite, so make sure you have at least one other person with you. I recommend probably a party of three. And once you kill this number of dragon Dragon Kin, you're going to head back to Helendris and turn into Quest. Upon turning this quest in, you'll receive the quest The True Masters from Helendris, and he'll task you with taking a letter down to Lakeshire to Magistrate Solomon at 3045 in Lakeshire itself. Once you deliver this letter, Magistrate Solomon will task you to deliver Solomon's plea and other letter to High Lord Bolvar Fordragon inside of Stormwind Keep in Stormwind at 7818. Once you turn this in, you'll speak with Lady Katrana Prestor, which is right to his right, the woman standing there. She's kind of mysterious, I'm not really sure why. And you're going to talk to her, and she will really pretty much down talk you a lot. And you're going to speak again to Bolvar to her left, and then finally Bolvar will give you his decree to take back to Solomon in Lakeshire. So essentially, a lot of step and fetch for this part of the quest chain. But the TLDR version is basically, there's this threat of Black Dragonkin, you deliver that to Lakeshire, which is close to the Burning Steps, and you're trying to talk Bolvar into the reality of this menace, this Black Dragonkin menace, and Lady Prestor is just saying that it's kind of not a big deal. So you're trying to persuade Bolvar into seeing the reality of this threat. 
So the magistrate in Lakeshire is obviously a little concerned because he starts crying in front of you and gives you another quest to head back to the burning steps and speak with Marshal Maxwell at Morgan Vigil, right next to where Telendris was at 8569. And Maxwell will task you with the next part of the quest of the True Masters with seeking out Ragged John, who's a dwarf in the northern part of Burning Steps at 6524. And when you go up to him, you're going to open a dialogue box talking about this official business that's concerning the dragons. And this is a long RP event where he tells you a story about Iron Foe, Iron Fell, the hammers themselves, how Thorisan is related to that, and the whereabouts of a friend of his, Marshall Windsor. After you find out that Windsor's been captured in Black Rock Depths, you're going to turn that information back to Marshall Maxwell at Morgan's Vigil and pick up the quest, Marshall Windsor. So Maxwell will task you to enter Black Rock Depths and find Marshall Windsor. In order to do that, you're going to have to kill High Interrogator Gersten, who's in the detention block at 4393. After you kill her, she will drop a prison cell key, which will allow you to open the prison cells in the detention block. Next, you're going to open Marshall Windsor's cell at 4792 and turn in the quest and receive the next part of the chain for a reward. So you're going to head back out of BRD, head back to Morgan's Vigil, talk to Marshall Maxwell, and turn in the quest. But there's no follow-up quest. So what you have to do now is head back into Black Rock Depths with your party, start clearing mobs in there, and looking for a crumpled up note drop. And this is a quest item. When you click on it, it will open up the next part of the quest chain. And once you have the next part of the quest chain, you're going to go back to Marshall Windsor who's still in a cell and you'll receive the next part of the quest chain. Now, Marshall Windsor has lost any data that's going to point to the to the Dark Iron Dwarves and the Black Rock Orcs to this connection with the dragons. But he realizes that his information most likely lies with two bosses inside of BRD, General Angerforge and Golem Lord Argelmac. Now, killing both of these bosses will require you having the Shadow Forge key, so make sure you have that or someone in your party does and head to kill these bosses. General Angerforge is at 3466 and the Golem Lord is at 3451. After killing both of them, they will drop information. Make sure you pick that information up head back to Marshall Windsor and receive the quest jailbreak. After you drop this off, you'll have to do a very long escort quest where you're going to escort Marshall Windsor to the entrance of Black Rock Depths. But before he goes to the entrance, he has to make sure he gets his gear and saves all of his friends. Now, spoiler alert, he's going to open every cell door to look for these guys. In the process of trying to find his friends, you're going to have to clear the path ahead of him. You have to kill anyone who comes out of a prison cell who's not one of his friends. And once you free his two friends, he'll walk his way all the way back to the entrance of Black Rock Depths and you'll complete the quest. Once you safely bring Marshall Windsor to the entrance, you'll be able to return to Morgan's Vigil and turn your quest to Marshall Maxwell and receive your rewards. After completing this quest, Marshal Maxwell will task you to go to the front gates of Stormwind and speak with Squire Rowe. Now, Squire Rowe is right at the entrance of Stormwind, and once you speak to him, he will summon Marshal Windsor. And Marshal Windsor will ride up on his mount, and you will walk to the front gates of Stormwind where you're met by a group of Alliance soldiers. Now, Marshal Windsor will talk to the commander there, and they will have an RP moment, and Marshal Windsor will talk the commander into letting him into the city to confront both Bolvar and Lady Prestor. After this RP moment, the commander agrees with Windsor, lets him go into the city, and you're going to escort Windsor all the way through the city to Stormwind Keep. And once in Stormwind Keep, you'll confront Lady Prestor, or should we say, Anixia. After Anixia reveals herself, she will also reveal that the guards are also her black dragon kin. She will flee, but the black dragons will attack. And in the attack, they will kill Marshal Windsor, but focus their attacks on Bolvar Four Dragon. Now, this is definitely doable. You can do this by yourself. You don't need to be in a group. Just make sure you don't pull through threat off of Bolvar. He produces a pretty good amount of threat. I was able to max rank Blizzard for the entirety of the fight on my mage, and Bolvar held aggro. He's a pretty good tank. Make sure you help him bring him down, and once he brings all the dragons down, he will give you another quest called the Dragon's Eye, and he will also give you a fragment of the Dragon's Eye, and he will task you to find someone in the world who can figure out what this item is and what it's useful for. So the person you are looking for is Halle, a high elf residing on a cliff face in Winter Spring. Now, there are two ways you can get to her. You can climb up and use your mount to jump across and see if you can get to her, but there's, a, but there's also a teleportation rune that'll bring you up to her. The problem is the teleportation rune is located inside of Scryer's cave. Now, this is a cave full of elite blue dragonkin, and you have to clear your way all the way to the back of the cave and use the teleportation rune to get to the top of this cliff in Winter Spring. Either way, when you get to her, she will give you a quest to kill General Dracoseth, the final boss in Upper Black Rock Spire, and he's located in 3280. Now, you're going to need someone to have the Seal of Ascension in 
your raid group you need also a raid to get in here of 10 people and once you clear all the way through upper black rock spire you'll have to fight general dracoseth he has four abilities cleave which is a frontal cleave ability a fire nova aoe a thunderclap aoe which also reduces your movement speed and conflagration which is a cc that causes you to be dazed if you're hit by it so this could be a little bit challenging fight make sure you clear the area around him but once you kill him he will drop an item called the blood of the dragon champion and you're going to loot this head back to Halle over in winter spring you're either going to have to again climb up there to get to her or use a teleportation rune in the back of that cave and she will give you the drake fire amulet congratulations you are now attuned to anixia's lair make sure you have it with you when you want to do the raid which is of course located in Duskwallow marsh all right, we've completed the Nixia's Lair. The next two raids are pretty simple in comparison. So for Blackwing Lair, this is tier two. The raid itself is actually accessible through Upper Black Rock Spire via a raid portal at 6335. However, you can get to the raid much quicker using the Orb of Command, which is located in Black Rock Mountain Complex near the entrance to Black Rock Spire. This will teleport you to BWL upon clicking on it, but you're gonna have to complete a very short quest chain for you to be able to use this orb. There are really only two steps. The first thing you have to do is kill the Scar Shield Quartermaster, who is located near the Orb of Command. If you're looking at the entrance to Black Rock Spire and make a right, go down the corridor, and the first left you can make, you're going to head down there, and you'll see three mobs, and one of them will be the Scar Shield Quartermaster. You're going to kill him and loot Black Hand's command and accept the quest that the item gives you. It all it tasks you to do is go to Upper Black Rock Spire, so get into a raid group, make sure you have the Seal of Ascension. You're going to kill the final boss, which you already killed for the Anixia attunement, General Dracoseth. And once you kill him, there will be an orb behind him at 3280. You're going to click that orb, and congratulations, you're now attuned to Blackwing Lair. And you can use that orb of command located at the end of that hallway. You went down to kill that Scar Shield Quartermaster to teleport inside of BWL itself. Now for the final raid in Vanilla Wow, next Ramus. This is also a pretty simplistic process, it's a three-step process. The first thing you're going to have to do is achieve honored reputation with the Argent Dawn. This can be done at any phase in Vanilla Wow or Classic Wow, it doesn't have to be during the Scourge Invasion or next Ramus. Make sure you have the Argent Dawn Commission Trinket, which is obtainable via the NPCs in Light's Hope Chapel or at the Bulwark for the Horde or Chillwind Camp for the Alliance. And once you have this trinket and you equip it, you'll be able to collect Scourge Stones that will drop off of Undead Minions and Skullamance, Stratholm, and the Eastern and Western Plaguelands. And once you have enough of these, you can turn these in to increase your reputation with the Argent Dawn. It's actually possible to even get Exalted before next Ramus comes out. Once you're honored, though, in Light's Hope Chapel, you can accept the quest to Dread Citadel next Ramus from Archmage Angela Dos Santos. And the turn-in for the quest depends upon your current reputation. If you're honored, it's going to require 60 gold, 5 Arcane Crystals, two Nexus Crystals, and one Righteous Orb. If you're revered, it's only 30 gold, two Arcane Crystals, and one Nexus Crystal. And if you're exalted, the attunement to Nexus Ramus is entirely free. Make sure you get that rep up during the early parts of Vanilla, so you don't have to put out so much time and energy and gold into getting these reagents. The Arcane Crystals are mined from high-end mining veins in the world. Nexus Crystals are from disenchanting purple items or epic items. And the Righteous Orb you can get in Stratholme, which drop off of NPCs in the living side. You can also buy Buy all these reagents off the auction house. And that's it for next Ramus. You just have to pretty much buy your way in. On a side note, there are many quests that are available either before or during the Scourge Invasion of next Ramus from the Argent Dawn that will also increase your rep. But turning in Scourge Stones is something you can do all the time, regardless if you have quests done or not. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it. We've covered all the attunements for raids in Classic WoW. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something and I hope this guide will make things a little bit easier once Classic launches. If you like this guide, please leave a like below. If you enjoy the type of content my brother and I put out, including Duff Talk, our podcast, Classic Wild WoW Gems, and other guides we make, consider subscribing because we have a lot more content coming for everyone. You can follow us on Twitter and you can join the Def Camp Melderon community on Discord. Also, Def Camp streams regularly on Twitch and on YouTube, so definitely check them out there. Links to all this stuff will be in the description below. This guide, along with many others made by people just like you and other content creators will be available on ClassicWild.live, so definitely make sure to check us out on ClassicWild.live. Last but not least, thank you patrons for making videos like this possible, increasing the quality of our video content. If you're interested in supporting Def Camp Melder on TV directly, consider becoming a patron. There'll be a link in the description and a clickable link at the end of this video. Thank you everyone for watching, keep on key binding and grinding, and I hope to see you in Classic Azeroth. Greetings adventurers, Melderon here. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you'd like to sport some official Def Camp Melderon t-shirts and hoodies, head on over to Brandung Media's Def Camp Melderon TV merchandise website. The link is in the description below.